Hello. In today's module, we will be talking about human relations approach and the related experiments, which is Hawthorne experiments. So human relations school was basically developed after classical school of thought that was administrative school and scientific school of management. After the criticism from the scientific management school, uh, they, there was a need to develop a human relations school. So Hawthorne studies basically gave rise to this new movement, which is known as human relations movement. Researchers, they started investigating what are the reasons for human re behavior at work. And the credit of development of the human relations approach is given to Elton Mayo, who was basically a psychologist. Other individuals who contributed to the human relations school are Maslow, that is Abraham Maslow and McGregor. Now, for human relation approach, there were many contributors, but the first intensive and systematic analysis of human factor in organization, it was made in the form of Hawthorne experiments. Hawthorne studies was basically conducted by Elton Mayo and Fritz Rothlesberger in the 1920s with the workers at the Hawthorne plant of Western Electric Company. Now, in the first picture, you can see Elton Mayo. He was basically an associate professor in industrial research at Harvard University, and he was a founder of industrial sociology and human relations movement. In the second picture, you can see Elton Mayo with Fritz Rothlesberger. The Hawthorne plant of Western Electric Company was basically manufacturing telephone system Bell, and it employed about 30,000 employees at the time of experiments. Now, uh, the company was basically providing benefits like pension, sickness benefits and other recreational benefits, but they observed that there was a great deal of dissatisfaction among the workers and the productivity was not really up to the mark. So, in 1924, a team of uh, Elton Mayo, and, uh, that, who was a psychologist, and Rothlesberger, who was a sociologist, they investigated what are the real causes behind this phenomena. So they conducted various researches in four phases from 1924 to 32. That is for a period of eight years, they conducted four experiments. So you can see the Hawthorne experiment. Uh, this was the Hawthorne plant uh, the Western, of the Western Electric uh, Factory. It was situated outside Chicago. And the reason for conducting this experiment was to find out that what are the factors that basically brings fluctuations in workers' productivity. So the four parts of Hawthorne experiments were, first part was the illumination experiment, which was conducted over a period of three years from 1924 to 27. The second part was known as relay assembly test room study, which was conducted for a period of two years from 1927 to 29. The third part of Hawthorne experiment was known as mass interviewing program, conducted between 1928 to 30, that is two years. And the fourth part was bank wiring observation room experiment, which was conducted in 1932. So let's first see the illumination experiment or the first part of the experiment. So in the picture, you can see that workers are uh, producing uh, telephone uh, exchange bells and uh, there is a lighting system on the ceiling. And in the illumination experiment, they wanted to find out how a physical factor like the amount of light or varying levels of the amount of light, whether it affects the productivity or not. And they assumed that a higher illumination would basically increase the productivity. So they conducted two groups. One was known as the experimental group, which was exposed to varying illumination. And the second group was known as control group, in which there was no varying illumination or lighting was not changed. And there was constant illumination. So what they observed was, in the experimental group, they made changes in the illumination and when there was an increase in illumination, the productivity increased and when there was a decrease in illumination, surprisingly, the productivity still increased. But when there was very dim illumination or very uh, the moonlight illumination was there, then only the productivity decreased. In the control group, it was observed that illumination when, uh, basically remained constant but still the productivity increased. And they, uh, they found out that there is no relationship between illumination of light and productivity. So researchers found that as they increased the illumination in the experimental group, both groups they produced, they increased their production. But when the illumination was decreased, intensity was decreased, the production continued to increase in both the groups. It was surprising. 
and the production in the experimental group it decreased only when the illumination was decreased to the level of moonlight that is very low illumination thus it was concluded that illumination did not have any effect on productivity so this physical factor did not have any effect on productivity so they uh, in, uh, in they inferred that something else was interfering with the productivity and so they conducted another phase of experiment which was known as relay assembly test room experiment that was a part 2 now this was determined uh, this was uh, designed to determine the effect of changes in various job conditions on group productivity so they found out that no physical factor is affecting productivity but there's something else so they uh, worked out on the changes in job conditions so what they did was they set up a relay assembly test room and it involved assembly of telephone relays and in which they had a, a group of six women they were selected and uh, they had to work uh, with each other and the output basically depended on the speed and the continuity in which the women worked so if one woman did not work uh, properly it would affect the productivity of all the six women so what they did was experiment started with introducing various changes and the duration of this experiment was from 4 to 6 weeks so what they did was they introduced various changes like the first change introduced was that the incentive system was changed so instead of uh, the entire organization the productivity depending on the entire organization's productivity what they did was uh, they paid the girl each girl extra uh, on the basis of the other five girls so if the six girls together uh, had increased productivity then they were paid extra rather than the output of the large group so what happened was they sh- they saw that the productivity increased as compared to before the second change that they introduced in the organization or in this particular experiment of six women was they introduced 5 minute uh, rest that was they were given two rest of 5 minutes each one in the morning and other in the evening so what they did uh, what they noticed was uh, and later it was uh, this particular rest was increased to 10 minutes so they were given 10 minutes rest uh, in the morning and in the evening and they again noticed that the productivity increased now they in- introduced a third change the third change was that the rest period was reduced to 5 minutes but its frequency frequency was introduced that is earlier they were giving given two breaks one in the morning and one in the afternoon but now they were given four breaks so uh, what happened with that was the productivity decreased slightly and the reason uh, for the decrease in productivity was that the girls complained that frequent rest intervals basically was affecting their rhythm of work and they did not wa- uh, they did not uh, want frequent rest intervals so they introduced another change that was uh, it was again reduced to uh, the number of rest periods were again reduced to 2 of 10 minutes each but now in this case they were also provided some coffee or soup with a sandwich in the morning and in even in the evening they were provided some snack with it so what happened uh, because of this change they noticed that the productivity again increased the fifth change that they introduced in this experiment was of the working hours and uh, work days also were introduced so what they did was they eliminated saturday work they also allowed women to leave early one hour early that is from 5 pm to 4 pm and surprisingly they noticed that the productivity increased in this case and it was noted that as each change was uh, introduced the absenteeism was also decreasing their morale increased and they required less supervision so now the researchers decided uh, that they should revert back to the original position that was all the rest and all the benefits were removed from the experiment and they thought that the productivity would decrease again but instead surprisingly the productivity increased further instead of going down so it was concluded that productivity increased not because of positive changes in physical factors but because of the changes in the girls attitude towards work and their work group so they developed a feeling of stability and sense of belongingness they developed a sense of responsibility and self discipline so physical factors were not affecting the productivity it was the attitude or the group behavior that was affecting the productivity and then the third experiment was conducted which was known as mass interviewing program in which uh, they studied the human behavior in the 
company because now they knew that the human behavior was basically affecting the productivity so that employed about 20000 employees the interviews were conducted on 20000 employees and it was uh, to determine basically the employee attitude towards company supervision insurance plans promotions and wages so the first uh, pl- um, the modus operandi for this particular experiment initially was direct interviewing so what they did was in direct interviewing they asked a question like do you like your supervisor and they had to answer in either yes or a no and they noticed that this system of interviewing was not working and employees were not able to give their uh, proper feedback or attitude uh, towards this particular experiment so they, they changed the interviewing program to non directive interviewing that was they the interviewer simply asked do you like your supervisor and there was an open ended uh, uh, question uh, based on this and they had to answer freely the respondents had to answer freely about it so the method was basically changed from direct interviewing to non directive interviewing and here the interviewer was asked to listen instead of talking arguing or advising so interview program it basically gave valuable various valuable insights on human behavior like first that the human uh, the, the worker behavior was not influenced by individual behavior but it was influenced by group behavior that is how the group behaves the worker behaved similarly second uh, valuable insight they got from mass interviewing program was that the position of worker is a reference from which the worker gives meaning to events features like the hours of work wages so basically what the position of worker is from that he basically saw what are basically the hours of work wages etc and the third uh, insight that they got from this experiment was that the social demand of a worker are influenced by social experiences and of groups both inside and outside the work plant so not just the uh, worker behavior inside the plant affected the productivity but how they behaved outside the plant also affected their productivity and attitude towards the job so they conducted the fourth experiment that was a bank wiring observation room experiment in which they uh, selected 14 male workers and the men were engaged in the assembly of terminal banks for the use of ex- telephone exchanges so uh, in this experiment what they did was uh, it was basically conducted to analyze the functioning of a small group and how it affects the individual behavior because from the last experiment they got to know that social behavior is affecting the productivity so they wanted to know how it basically impacts the individual behavior so here they formed the hypothesis or the assumption that in order to earn more the workers would basically produce more and also to get the group bonus uh, they would help each other to produce more however this hypothesis did not hold valid and they were very surprised to know the results that the workers decided the target for themselves which was lower than the company target or not, not the higher target so this study suggested that informal relationships are an important factor in determining human behavior and productivity so workers basically they gave restricted output they were uh, targeting lower productivity rather than high productivity because of the following reasons they thought that uh, there was a fear of unemployment because if they would produce more per head then some of the workers or their friends or the groups would be put out of employment they also feared that the standards would be raised if they produced more they thought that if they reached the standard set by the management then management would again raise the standard and that is why they gave restricted output the third reason was that to protect the slower workers they thought that the workers uh, if the faster workers um, produced more then the slower workers would be taken out of job and because they were f- uh, friendly on and off the job so to protect the slower workers the faster workers produced restricted output and the fourth reason was the satisfaction on the part of management that is management seemed to accept low production rate as no one was fired for restricted output and so they did not care to produce more so this was the, the the these were the four parts of the hawthorn experiment which led to the human relations movement so uh, from this particular experiment the characteristics of human relations approach were developed and they found out that organization is basically a social system system is composed of many interacting groups many informal groups emerge at a workplace and they have great impact on the behavior of the members and workers don't always behave rationally that is 
emotions, feelings and values, these things also play a very important role. And monetary gains alone cannot motivate workers, which was mentioned in scientific management, that was nullified in this particular approach. And workers' participation in decision making basically boosts their, boost their morale and productivity. So workers' participation was given importance in this particular approach. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked, then please like, share and subscribe to our channel Easy MBA. Thank you.